Hello and welcome to an exciting new episode of Talking About Stoicism. And uh, today happens to be Friday the 13th, and I thought it might be interesting to try and approach that topic from a Stoic viewpoint. Because I think there are one or two points to make. This is interesting. Um, so, I had to think about it because Friday the 13th, as, as you know, there's all kinds of myths. Friday the 13th, bad luck, all kinds of bad things happen to you, and it's just dreadful, and you have to be extra careful, all these kinds of things. And it's kind of fun to read up the whole history of that date and how that started, etc. But that's not really my concern here. My concern is, I thought, what would a Stoic say to this kind of practice? What would a Stoic like, say, Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus or maybe Seneca say about, well, it's Friday the 13th, and therefore this is a particularly unlucky day? Well, from a scientific viewpoint... There is no reason to assume, I, I would hope this is clear, but maybe it isn't. From a scientific viewpoint, there's no reason to assume that anything is different on Friday the 13th from any other day of the year. So Friday the 14th or Friday the 12th would not be less unlucky than Friday the 13th would be. There is simply no reason for any concern. So then why do people believe that there is some sort of reason to assume that this is a particularly difficult day. Well, I think what happens here, and after I've described that, I'll, I'll try to get to my thoughts on, on the stoicism of all this, or I should maybe say how stoicism relates to all this. I think what, what people often forget about is an interesting psychological phenomenon called an illusory correlation. And illusory correlations, I think the simplest way to describe that phenomenon is to think of red traffic lights when you're in a hurry. So if, you, if you're in a hurry, you've probably noticed that traffic lights, they all tend to be red, right? You have to stop at every single light. In reality, those traffic lights are just as likely to be red or green on any other day as on the day that you're in a hurry. However, because you are in a hurry, you tend to notice that every red light is red, or at least that a lot of lights are red, and as a result, that stands out to you more. And therefore, you believe that there is a correlation where in reality there is none. And this happens a lot in everyday life, that, that people believe that two things are correlated that are simply not. And then there is the small... Um, detail of correlations not actually implying causation, but that's a whole different matter, isn't it? So anyway, so we, we have that, and I think that we are very, and this is not a thought unique to me, I'm, I'm sure that people have, have published things on this, but I think that a lot of the Friday the 13th nonsense really comes from illusory correlations. Something bad happens, you stub your toe, you, you maybe it's something bigger, you, you get into a car accident, whatever. You say, yeah, well, it's Friday the 13th, so there you go, that, that's why. Of course, it could have happened just as likely on any other day, right? It's just a set of circumstances that just happens to be there, and as a result, you happen to have some bad luck. Now, every day you have bad luck. I mean, I don't know about you, but every day things happen to me that, that some are bigger, some are smaller. It's just the way life works, right? That they want to buy the one thing in the grocery store and it's sold out, or you want to, whatever, the, the, whatever. We're just very likely to ascribe something here to, to an illusory correlation. I think that's kind of fun and interesting to think about because I'm a psychologist and I like those kinds of things. Now, what would a Stoic say? I try to really think um, about any relevant quotes, and I, I, I must say I struggle a little bit, but I, I do come back to authors like Marcus Aurelius who would say who, who have written stuff along the lines of, and this is quoted loosely verbatim, <clears throat> um, but maybe God is real, maybe God is not real, we don't know. Right, so maybe all of this is, like, everything is caused by this sort of deity, and maybe it's not. And the thing is that it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter, because at the end of the day, whatever is causing the things that happen is the thing that is causing the things that happen. 
and there isn't necessarily much you can do about that thing. And then, of course, Epictetus just barges in with, well, some things are within your control, and then you can change them, and there's no reason to be worried, and some things are not within your control, and then there is no reason to be worried because they're not within your control. And that's easier said than done, and it's even harder to figure out which things are and which things are not within your control sometimes. But, having said that, I think this viewpoint from Marcus Aurelius is a very interesting one in the context of Friday the 13th, right? Again, scientifically, absolutely no reason to assume that you should be unluckier or less lucky on that day than any other day of the year. But, at the end of the day, certain things will happen to you. Whether you want to or not, they are going to happen. Some will be pleasant things and others will be unpleasant things. On a day like Friday the 13th, people, I think, are very likely to discard any of the positive things and then focus on the negative things because that is what is expected to happen on that unlucky day. So when you remember that, that things can happen, but that things happen all the time and that every day some good things happen to you and some bad things happen to you because that's simply how life works, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier, at least in my mind, to, to process something like that. And then you see that there is this kind of weird superstitious behavior that, that we suffer from. And not only do we suffer from it, uh, it was Boris Frederick Skinner, the uh, behaviorist, which was a, a stream in, in, in psychological science at some point, uh, he thought that we should only study a observable behavior, and he actually investigated out of a sort of a personal interest superstition in animals and he found that if he would happen to reward he would say reinforce but if he would reward animals with food if they were a little hungry at exactly the right moment when they were doing something odd after a couple times they would start to believe that that is what caused food to appear of course we don't know if that's what an animal thought that that's what they thought but they started to repeat the behavior so simple example he might have a pigeon, he worked with a lot of pigeons, he put, they're kind of stupid, but they have an interesting brain, he put the pigeons in, in a, a sort of like a little cage, and then when that pigeon was hopping around, as pigeons do, and it would poke its head in one top corner, he would give it food. And then that, that animal would, would eat the food, because it was hungry, it would walk around a bit, and when it poked its head by accident into that, sing, that same corner again, Skinner would give the pigeon food again. And again do that a couple times and at some point the animal kept just poking its head into that one specific corner. That is superstition. It's superstition because it, it wasn't really that specific corner that made food appear, it was just random, random behavior, right, that was rewarded and as a result became meaningful. And I think that is something that we, we often do too. So these kinds of interesting superstitions uh, that, that people have about all kinds of things, right? It's not only Friday the 13th, it's also coming up on, on the Halloween season, so black cats crossing the road, and, and you can't walk under ladders, and, and if you break a mirror, it gives you bad luck, and all these kinds of weird superstitious things may have lengthy histories, but they're simply not true. There's, there's ne never have people actually shown a real causative uh, relationship. Yes. I think causal relation, I think I can say causative. Anyway, they have never shown a causal relationship between these things, between, well, a black cat crossed the road, now you have bad luck. It makes no sense. And I think Stoics, and again, this is my interpretation of Stoicism, but I think Stoics would agree. They would say, no, that makes no sense. You, you look at something, things are going to happen as they are. They're not affected by what day of the week it is. A really hardcore Stoic might say something like, well, it's the Logos that determines what is going to happen. And if it's Friday the 13th or Friday the 12th or Friday the 27th or Friday the 31st or Friday the 2nd, it doesn't matter, right? The things are going to happen anyway. So deal with those things as they cross your path, remembering that some things are within your control and other things are not. And in the end, hopefully everything is going to be as fine as it can be. Certainly, by realizing that that is the case, things are likely to be as fine as they can be. Because you realize that that's the case, and that you can't control everything. These were my thoughts. And I, I 
I hope this wasn't too rambling, but I, I thought I would throw in some of the science-y stuff because I find that interesting. But it's a very, I think it's a very interesting concept. What, what makes people believe in this kind of stuff and how do you end it? But also, how would a Stoic look at those kinds of things? So let me know what you think. Let me know how you think a Stoic would approach something like Friday the 13th. I always like reading the comments. That's it for now. Hope this was useful. And thanks for watching. I'm glad to see you later. Bye.